Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're going to go over the Franklin A Power 2. Let's get into it. The most exciting development about the A Power 2 is that we have doubled the continuous output current from 5 kilowatts to 10 kilowatts continuous output current. Uh, we have now added 33% more peak output current going from 10 kilowatts to 15 kilowatts peak output current. Uh, it can now charge at 8 kilowatts. Uh, I think previously it was around 5 kilowatts. So what that means is you can AC couple more solar without having to go in these complex electrical configurations. As always, the Franklin A Power 2 has lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, which is the leading chemistry on the market at the time of this video. The warranty, we have jumped from a 12 year warranty to a 15 year warranty or 60 megawatt hours of throughput. So whichever comes sooner, that 60 megawatt hours of throughput or 15 year warranty, uh, it should end up about the same if you're cycling these batteries daily. The operating temperature is from negative four to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And these batteries can be installed up to an altitude of 9,843 feet. So just before the Franklin A Power 2 came out, we had the A Gate 1.3 get released. The Franklin A Gate 1.3 is the new iteration of Franklin's microgrid interconnect device. This is kind of the uh, management system that sort of is the brains of the operation in your home solar and energy storage setup. So what they've come out with now with the A-Gate 1.3 is a main load relay. The, the reason for this main load relay is something that's common, a common issue with AC coupled energy storage systems is if a customer drains their batteries down to next to nothing or, or dead in the middle of the night, um, you wake up the next day, we've got a black start. It starts the system back up when the solar is back on to start charging the batteries. Uh, a lot of times uh, all your home loads are gonna kick on that same morning. And if it's low light conditions and you've got a relatively dead battery, what will happen is your, your home loads will come on and it will not let your battery charge back up to a reasonable state of charge and will kind of um, cause that system to shut down or even permanently shut down in the morning. So what the main load relay does is in the morning uh, when it's low light conditions and you've got a dead battery and your just main focus is on charging that battery back up, uh, it's gonna disconnect the home loads um, to kind of delay that transition of, of having backup power in your home. And it's gonna give that battery and solar time to start producing solar, start charging that battery, get your battery up to a reasonable state of charge and bringing in a reasonable amount of solar input, at which point that main load relay will cut your home's loads back on uh, so that you can continue running off of solar and storage during your outage. Vehicle to load, that is another big new development here. Franklin is now capable of running vehicle to load uh, reverse EV charging with any current EVs that are set up to do that. Right now, the main two vehicles uh, set up to do vehicle to load charging are the Tesla Cybertruck and the Ford Lightning. So uh, again, this is compatible with basically any vehicle set up to this. So in the future, as more vehicles come online offering this feature, the Franklin A-Gate 1.3 will be able to accommodate any of those new EVs coming online. Uh, one thing to note with that vehicle to load charging, uh, that is going to use that generator module. So um, one big thing about the Franklin system is that you can have a backup generator. Well, if you end up using that generator module for reverse EV charging, uh, you're not going to be able to integrate a fossil fuel powered generator. So if you're looking for multiple forms of backup, in this case, you're going to have to choose either generator or EV. You can't have both. 
Another thing to note with that vehicle to load charging, again, that is just during an outage. That's vehicle to home load. So again, maybe you've got one or two batteries and you've got a massive 100 kilowatt hour battery bank in your EV. Uh, during that outage, uh, you could plug your EV in and have a, kind of add a massive battery bank to your backup system. But that is only for grid outages. That is not for when the grid is functioning. And that goes for any manufacturer that has V2L charging these days. Uh, it is not yet grid interactive, so you're not going to be using your EV to sort of uh, maximize consumption while the grid is operating. So they've come out with a new generator module if you're someone trying to integrate a generator or that EV into your Franklin system. Uh, one thing that they've done is they've integrated the generator CTs. Um, in the past model of A-Gate, the only uh, manually installed CTs for most systems was those generator CTs. And that's just one more point of installer error. So in this case, they've integrated those CTs into the generator module so that uh, it just eliminates one more form of human error. Another thing they have done is uh, they've removed the need to connect that generator module to the smart circuits when you have something like a utility sense generator uh, that used to kind of take up one of those precious smart circuits if you're integrating a utility sense generator into the system, but that's no longer the case. That's completely separate now. You're always going to have your extra two smart circuits, even when integrating a utility sense generator. So the smart circuits, nothing's really changed there. You know, we've got a double pole 50 and a double pole 80 to work with. Um, again, one of those you can turn into two single poles, but that's usually not relevant. You're usually just trying to pick two large autonomous loads like heating and air conditioning or a water heater to throw in those smart circuits module. And again, what those do is during an outage, uh, you can program them a few different ways, but the most popular one is to say, okay, once my battery hits 50% depth of discharge, I want to shed those, uh, those two large loads. I want to shed my heating and air conditioning and my water heater, and that way I'm saving that second 50% of my battery bank for more important loads such as lights, outlets, refrigerators, freezers, uh, well pumps, things of that nature. Uh, they have now integrated the ability to add quadplex breakers for the PV and the ESS. Now, a quadplex breaker is essentially a double pole breaker that allows uh, two double pole breakers into one slot, uh, what would traditionally use one single double pole breaker. And basically what that's done before, if you had multiple batteries or multiple PV systems, you'd have to install them in a separate sub panel and then land them in the PV or the energy storage breakers on the A gate. Now uh, that just eliminates that need for that combiner panel. Instead, we can just use that quadplex breaker to land uh, you know, two separate uh, PV systems or batteries into the same breaker space. I'd say one downside with the new A gate 1.3 is that they made the backup expansion lug kit optional. Um, I kind of see that as a downside. I'm not sure why they made that optional, especially with the new A power 2. Uh, these now have basically a 60 amp backfed breaker. So if you have ever have more than one single Franklin A power 2 at the time of this video, you are no longer going to be able to use that energy storage input on the A gate because that maxes out at a 100 amp breaker. If you're getting value out of today's content, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, press the notification bell, or leave a comment down in the description below. Let's get back into it. So some other new features is they have removed fans from the A Power 2. Uh, that's one form of a potential equipment failure gone. Uh, there are no vents on the sides of the A Power 2. We've got additional vents on the top of the A Power 2. Um, we've now got the metering built into the uh, energy management system. So there used to be a little separate energy meter down in the bottom of the A gate. Now it's integrated in the top with the rest of the energy management system. So that has opened up more conduit entries in the side of the A gate. It's also sort of, sort of changed those CT installation requirements when you have things such as um, split systems or complex 
electrical configurations that actually do require some manually installed CTs to be installed. All right, so derating capability. So this is pretty big. Uh, you can now derate the uh, Franklin A Power 2s. They are such a massive battery. Uh, we start to get into limits for utilities allowing certain size batteries for certain systems. Some places have some pretty strict limitations there. So uh, if you need to sort of curtail those batteries back to meet some utility requirements or electrical requirements, they do have that ability. Now that is on grid only. Um, I, it seems like uh, in the future, we are expecting this to be also off grid, uh, which would be amazing, right? Because what we've got, say we've got uh, one Franklin A Power 2 has a 60 amp back feed. We can land that on the energy storage input in the A gate 1.3. But once we get to two A power twos, we now have a 120 amp backfed energy storage breaker. Um, and, and that exceeds the max energy storage input on the A gate. Um, just barely, just barely. So if we were able to derate this off grid, the, the, the benefit there is we'd still be able to land a two battery system uh, in the energy storage circuit slot on the A gate 1.3 and just be, be able to derate it just a hair to come in under that 100 amp max backfed breaker. And that way, regardless of if it's on grid or off grid, we're not going to trip that breaker or overload the, the energy storage input on the A gate. So again, uh, currently, if you have more than one battery, you cannot use that energy storage input on the A gate. What that also means is you can't use that main load relay. That main load relay is going to turn off your home loads and allow that energy storage to charge through the energy storage input on the A gate. The moment you have two batteries or multiple batteries and you can no longer use that energy storage input, uh, you've got to, again, use that backup expansion lug kit. It's going to land in those critical loads lugs in the bottom of the A gate. And then that main load relay really serves no purpose. So really that main load relay is only really applicable for a one battery system at the time of this video. But again, here in the near future, we may be able to derate that second battery just a hair to, to still be able to utilize that energy storage input and also utilize that main load relay. So I'm a huge fan of the Franklin whole home battery system. It is one of my favorite energy storage systems on the market today. The reason being is it's PV agnostic, right? You can pair this with any existing PV system or any new PV system. It really doesn't care what the PV system is because it is an AC coupled energy storage system. If you need to learn more about AC versus DC coupled energy storage systems, you can check out one of my previous videos on that subject. It's got lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry. It's got a massive battery output for both continuous and peak output current. It's got an industry leading warranty. This is one of the best warranties you'll see on the market today for any energy storage system. It can start a massive five ton AC unit. It can go to a high altitude. Um, it's got vehicle to load charging. Uh, at the time of this video, it's one of the only energy storage management systems on the market that offers that and it's agnostic to which EV that can do that. It's got the smart circuits built in, right? This is, a, this is intelligent load management built into the Franklin system. Most systems don't offer that today, and that's a huge downfall for a lot of your other energy storage system. This is a huge deal to manage some of those high current draw appliances in your home during a utility outage so that your system works flawlessly. And lastly, I've been in the industry for about 15 years now. And what I see just from my point of view is the Franklin system really doesn't have any problems. You know, no system is perfect. There's no perfect solution for any one given homeowner. But what I see is that this system just gets installed. People do not make any mistakes with it. It's relatively easy and quick and you don't see things breaking or going wrong. So it just seems like a really reliable solution for anyone out there needing energy storage in their home. 
If you're looking for a zero cost, pressure-free quote to install energy storage and solar on your home, go down in that description below, click on that Rocky Broad Solar Intake form. Just take a couple minutes to fill out a few questions about your specific scenario, and I'll get back to you within a few days with that zero cost pressure-free quote. Lastly, the most important new development with the Franklin A Power 2 is the LED light strip. Previous generations of the A Power X only had one blue LED light strip on the front. Now you can customize the colors on that LED light strip depending on your favorite color. Well, that's it for today. Thanks so much, each and every one of you for watching. I really appreciate you all. Until next time, take care.